eighth grade parents and welcome to our virtual conference day informational video. Uh, my name is Karen Rahill. I'm the principal at DeSales and I'm also the eighth graders technology teacher. So I'm going to start our meeting today by just telling you a little bit about what the eighth graders are doing in technology and then I'm going to pass the um, video off to the rest of the eighth grade team. Uh, this year in eighth grade technology, we started the year off with a power PowerPoint project on their summer reading book to get them familiar with the PowerPoint app on their iPads, which they're using with their own DeSales CatholicSchool.org email address and email account. Uh, so that was some good practice for them. And now we're currently working on digital citizenship and the importance of both being safe online and uh, being careful what they post. Um, so thank you. And I, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. The special area teachers, with the exception of Spanish, only give grades the second and fourth marking period. So you won't see them on this week's report card. Thank you. Uh, now I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mrs. Palumbo, and she is going to talk about science and, and living environments for the eighth graders. Hello. Um, in life science uh, today, uh, this year, uh, we just finished up with talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration, and we're moving on to genetics, and then we will do some DNA. We'll do a little bit on um, bacteria and viruses, and then we'll go on to larger organisms such as plants and animals. Um, some of the things I want to stress are the same things that I stress every year is to make sure that the students are getting assignments in on time. Um, and the assignments, most of them will be on Seesaw. And what they should do uh, after they hand them in is look back for comments. I give a lot of feedback. And sometimes I'm asking for additional information or corrections that they need to do. So uh, stress to your students that they should be reading the comments and following up on that um, so that they can learn more from that. If there are any questions, the best way to reach me is through email. Um, that's what I will get notification of right away so that I can respond promptly. Um, the comments that are left on Seesaw, I may not see until I open up that assignment to grade. So it's much better um, to email me right away so I can correct any issues that come up, especially any technical issues. Like recently, there was a recording um, without any sound and I didn't know about it. So if you let me know, I can correct all those technical problems right away and, and that works out best. So any questions or problems, please contact me um, by email. Thank you and have a good year. Uh, should I do regions? Oh yes, please go ahead. Okay, so for regions, um, it's a little uh, more detail. We cover the same topics that the life science will cover, but we cover it in a lot more detail and a lot faster pace. There is a lab requirement. So every week we have a lab. It's a little different this year because of the requirements um, we've been advised that uh, students cannot work on labs in, as partners, so we have to have more supplies and more equipment and everything has to be disinfected. So we are doing this year a little differently. Um, we are doing some virtual labs. I tried to select the um, labs that most closely match what we would have done um, in regular lab work. So we do a lot of virtual labs and um, that's working out so far. Later in the year, um, we will do some dissection and we will get into more projects as the year goes on. Um, so that's for regions. Most of the students are very good in the regions about getting all their work in. Um, they're very conscientious uh, about that. So there isn't too many issues with that. Um, Again, the best way uh, to contact me with any questions or concerns is by email, and um, we should have a great year. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Palumbo. Now we're going to move over to Kristen McCabe, who is going to talk to you about the art program this year in eighth grade. Welcome, Mrs. McCabe. Hi, um, this year we will be exploring different art processes and mediums and we began with our self portrait tiles. So with eighth grade, I try to do a lot more independent kind of study work, brainstorming and moving into bigger ideas that are tailored toward what they're interested in, especially because 
some of them, this may be their last art class they take. So I wanna make sure that we um, have spent as much time exploring as many things as we can. So from there, we moved on to the linoleum project where they're carving and creating their own printmaking plates, um, inspired by all the places you'll go from Dr. Seuss. So they're, they're picking different places they'd like to go maybe in the future or someplace they've been that they really enjoyed and they're inspired by that project. Um, and currently we are working with um, Ellen Martin on an art of COVID challenge that she and I have worked together with. She'll be guest speaking this week with the students um, to kind of connect our art projects and real world um, work right now. So that should be um, pretty interesting to see what they came up with. They're, they'll have a wide range of mediums that they can choose to work with. Um, the student's experience in art is influenced by the ownership they take and their participation grade is greatly influenced by um, their work habits in class. There's always time in class if it's used wisely to get everything done. So any questions, email me and the Instagram to sales art page, um, sometimes as videos or different um, things we wanna celebrate about the students on that page. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McCabe. Uh, next up is going to be Mrs. Hornquist, our PE and health teacher. Mrs. Hornquist. Hi everyone, Mrs. Horn Hornquist here. I teach PE and my normal curriculum that I would teach for phys ed has had to be completely revamped this year. I would say that normally we're working on different sports skills and a wide variety of those skills um, and applications to a variety of activities. However, those aspects have had to be altered this year uh, due to the guidelines from New York State. And although my plans have changed, my expectations have not for your child. Grades for PE for middle school students are not based off of your child's talents or deficits. Rather, I take a look at a bigger picture and I grade based on four components. Your, is your child prepared for PE? Um, do they have proper shoes, not Crocs? Um, are they following directions and staying on task? Are they participating to their fullest potential? And do they demonstrate good sportsmanship? Uh, they can earn four points for each category, totaling a possibility of 16 points a class. I mentioned how this year has altered my plans. Here's what I'm focusing on currently. I'm taking students outside as much as possible. Our temperature cutoff is uh, 20 degree real feel. So until then, I'm enjoying taking them outside and getting some fresh air. There has been no sharing of equipment using our hands and whatever equipment I am using, I'm sanitizing in between classes to make sure that uh, your child is safe when they're here with me. Students hand sanitize upon entering and leaving the gym. And when we are inside, I have spots for them to be safely spread out 12 feet apart because that's our guideline when we are moving. So taking into account all those guidelines to make sure that your child's safe is when they are here with me. Any students that are remote, I have everything on Seesaw as well, just like others have mentioned. And I will be posting weekly things. November, I know it's a little different. There's some daily challenges for them to do. It's giving thanks and doing planks is the November challenge. Um, but please just make sure that your child is checking in and they are going through the activities or the assignments that I post on Seesaw. And again, just like others have said too, if you have any questions, feel free to comment me for um, on my email. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hornquist. Now I'm going to move on to Mrs. McGon, who is our Spanish aid teacher. Mrs. McGon, thank you. Hi. Um, for eighth grade, uh, we're using a book that follows the standard curriculum for Spanish. Uh, after the initial assessment at the beginning of the year, I decided that it was very necessary to uh, start from the very basics and work um, our way up. Students are expected to bring their notebook, uh, workbook too, fully charged iPads, uh, headphones uh, to class every day. We use different ways for learning. Uh, which includes the textbook in class, CISO, uh, occasionally Rockalingua, Quizlet, and now uh, lately uh, Prickles. So I sent a letter home with your kids explaining how to use CISO. Uh, so please join CISO to see the homework and uh, to be aware of what are we doing. Uh, they generally have homework every day. If the homework is not submitted on time, they will get half of the points. 
Uh, they also can make cor test uh, corrections, which gives them the chance of heading a, getting a higher grade. The grade is made up of three categories, homework 30%, classwork 20%, and assessments uh, 50%. Uh, I am very happy with this group. Uh, they were really hard and um, they're very engaged with the Spanish. So please feel free to contact me anytime. Uh, my email is uh, on the website. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McGon. Um, parents, I do want to apologize if you hear the background noise while I'm speaking. Um, I'm in the computer lab and the 3D printer is currently printing a project for students, so that is what the noise uh, is behind me. So hopefully it's not too distracting for you. Um, next up, I'm going to introduce Mr. Schuster, our religion aid teacher. Mr. Schuster, thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Schuster, and I have the honor of having our wonderful eighth graders again for religion. This year's main theme of the religion uh, curriculum is church history. But we also take a more mature look at the daily readings and the readings that we've been studying for the last two years. It's uh, more of a discussion group, more almost like a related to a social studies or history class mixed in with the religion. We look at the effect of religion on society ever since its birth 2,000 years ago. And we've looked at the effect of society on religion, uh, which will come later, especially when we get toward the 20th and 21st centuries. So it's a, a very exciting time. Uh, we do have a service work requirement. The, uh, the students, uh, it's much different this year. Uh, but the students have been given the information. The uh, main project this year is a, something called the Observer, where they become a t time traveler, going back in time, looking at the historical events that we are talking about, and writing about it in the first person, as though they are observing it right away. And those are always fun to read, uh, very creative, and utilizes a connection with the ELA uh, writing and creative nature. So that's an exciting project, but I'm excited. The kids are working hard, the kids are outstanding. They're asking incredible questions this year, more mature questions, and uh, hopefully it's, we're gonna be here and just come along and end the year in a strong note. So if they have any questions, Always contact me. We're using Seesaw for most, for most everything, except for their observers, which they turn in via the email. So I hope uh, everybody stays safe and thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Schuster. Uh, now moving next door to Mrs. Fraz, who teaches math eight and algebra. Hi, I'm Mrs. Fraz and I teach the math eight class in the algebra class for math eight this year. Math 8 is really a prerequisite to their high school math. We study both algebra and geometry. Currently we're studying geometry and then uh, we will move into some of the algebra topics. The main source for um, the Math 8 is the Eureka books and I will supplement some with additional resources. I have started to record some of the lessons for them and they'll watch the video and do the lesson. They seem to like that. We'll do that once in a while. As far as the algebra class, um, this is a co the Common Core Algebra High School class. This is the foundational class for their high school math. Um, it prepares them to take the Regents in June. As of right now, we're, we're moving ahead as if there's gonna be a Regents we have not heard yet. So everything this class prepares them for that Regents exam. This course is a very broad curriculum and it moves at a fast pace. And they, they're seeing, like they saw today, that when we, we're, we move on to a topic, they need to know the prior topic to have success with the current topic. So it's all a building, and they really wanna monitor how they're doing, and if they don't understand something, see me immediately to make sure they understand that concept. The algebra class does have a textbook. It's a Glencoe book, so that's our main resource. And again, I supplement that with some additional resources. For both the classes, eSchool is updated constantly, so make sure that you're checking eSchool. You can see your child's progress if they're missing any assignments on eSchool. If they're absent, it's their responsibility to either check CESA 
or ask a friend um, for notes and assignments. This year, we're using two websites. We continue to use IXL. They're very familiar with IXL because they've used it all through middle school. There's weekly assignments on there. We've also introduced Khan Academy. They have logins for both websites. Khan Academy is a great website for, they have videos, they have practice. So when it comes time to take a test, you know, a lot of kids say, well, it's math. I can't study for a math test. It, absolutely not. They can study for a math test by using the questions that we did in class, going on IXL, practicing the concepts, going on to Khan Academy. The resources are endless for them to practice and study for a test. All the students are given the opportunity to succeed in my class. They just need to put the effort in. The best uh, lines of communication for me would be email. If you have any questions, concerns, always uh, just drop me an email and I'll get right back to you. If the kids need any additional help, just send me an email. We can set up a time that I can help them. This is a great group of kids. It's been you know, a great two years. I'm looking forward to this year. And thank you for giving me that opportunity to teach your children. Thank you, Mrs. Franz. And now we move on to social studies with Mrs. Lori Asher. Hello, grade eight parents. It's me, Mrs. Asher, the American history teacher, as well as their homeroom teacher. I'm truly happy to have the eighth grade this year for homeroom. They are truly a wonderful group. I enjoy them very much. We do laugh a lot. I'm so glad we're working together five days a week. They are benefiting from being in the classroom. I hope and pray we can continue this so the eighth grade can have a memorable year together. Of course, a study this year uh, started with the Civil War and we'll be working our way uh, to the turmoil of the 1960s and onto the, the Cold War. We are working on writing with great support and really thinking about issues of the past and present. It is truly wonderful to see how far they have come since their sixth grade year. The writing has definitely improved. If there's ever a need to see what is going on in class, please check Seesaw. I post the weekly schedule every Sunday evening. Seesaw will have all my daily lessons, worksheets, notes, due dates, and videos. It can also be beneficial to keep an eye on eSchool for your son or daughter's grades, especially if they're struggling. It will keep you in the loop uh, so there won't be any surprises. Like I mentioned my, in my class expectation sheet, I'm hoping to send these eighth graders off to high school more independent, prepared, and confident. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Asher. And our final uh, teacher to present for information about our class is Mrs. Amanda Saliski, our eighth grade ELA teacher. Thank you, Mrs. Saliski. Hi, hey, I'm Mrs. Seleski. This is my fourth year at DeSales, and I'm so happy to have your children again. Um, our curriculum focuses on reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and everything that we do addresses one of those tasks so in hopes of helping the students to really grow in these areas. I want them to have a strong foundation um, in both writing and speaking so that they can um, be effective communicators um, now in high school and then in college and, and for their whole lives. Um, as far as what they'll read this year, they're currently reading The Wednesday Wars and working on a big research project. I think that's actually what's printing in the um, computer lab right now, one of the students' projects. Um, but they're doing a big research project that deals with a topic from the 1960s, um, which is the setting of The Wednesday Wars, which is kind of um, incorporating research and um, our literature all together, and it's just a nice, um, nice project. After we finish up The Wednesday Wars, we're going to be reading A Christmas Carol and The Out Outsiders, which is always a favorite of the eighth graders. With regard to my specific coursework and assignments, you can find all these things on Seesaw. I post every day. And if we went to distance learning, that's where everything would be um, posted and that's where I would um, receive assignments back from your children. Um, I'm really looking forward to watching them to, to grow this year even more. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to be part of your child's education. Thank you, Mrs. Seleski. So that wraps up all of the teachers. Mrs. Davis could not be a part of our, our uh, meeting this afternoon. But uh, as the teachers have said, we are available. Please feel free to reach out to any of us. You can all, you're also welcome uh, to give me a call if you ever have any questions or concerns. 
Thank you, and I look forward to having a great year. Take care.